This is an interesting video about the loading and insertion of the Femtes EDOF IOL. This is also known as the bag in the IOL. This is an EDOF IOL consisting of four clip haptics and always works as a transition free optical zone consisting of an intermediate zone and a distance zone. The IOL is implanted with automated capsulotomy and the capsular axis size recommended is 4.9 mm and this can only be done with an automated femto laser or a laser based capsulotomy. We start by polishing the posterior capsule and once the posterior capsule is polished we instill viscoelastic within the bag distending the bag. and now we will see how to load the IOL into the cartridge. The IOL has got a very peculiar shape. It has got two large haptics which will posteriorly go into the bag and four clips on different sides. These clips will latch on to the capsular axis margin thus creating a rim of capsular axis around the IOL keeping it well centered and in the clear optical zone. We remove the IOL from its box and take the IOL out making sure that we do not touch the optic zone zone. Now you will see two large optics. Now this IOL is loaded into a cartridge after installation of viscoelastic. We will see the details of the IOL shape as we move along in the video. Here we see installing of viscoelastic within the cartridge loading bay. Now the lens is loaded into this. We notice the pattern of loading the IOL is that there are two holes on the leading edge haptic and one hole on the left side of the trailing haptic. Also the clips vertically are to be anteriorly. Now you see this is how I will load the lens making sure that the clips which are supposed to latch onto the capsule rexes are anteriorly and the haptics which are supposed to go into the bag are posteriorly. Now this cartridge will be loaded into an injector system. We will see this in a dummy large size model. Now this is the model or the dummy of the lens. Now see carefully that the haptics with which my two fingers are holding it are the haptics which will go inside the bag which means they will be posteriorly into the bag. Now these two clips which have holes in them are supposed to be on the anterior side while insertion. These clips will be latching onto the capsular axis while the two larger haptics will be in the capsular. Also note two small little wings or clips on the sides of the lens. Now you will notice this is the trailing hole on the left side and two trailing leading holes in the leading part of the haptic. Make sure that the trailing hole is on the left side of the injected part. Now if you notice there is a clip onto the anterior surface literally. This clip also has to come over the capsular axis. Similarly on the other side this clip also has to come anteriorly over the rexis. So the rexis will be entrapped into the small rim all around the IOL. There is a rim which is circling the IOL and the rexis which is 4.9 mm fits there. So there will be four clips, three and four, which will be over the capsular axis. And we ensure that these two holes on the leading part and one on the trailing part is on the left side. Now we proceed to inject the IOL, ensuring that the leading loop goes inside the bag you can either remove the viscoelastic behind the IOL before putting the trailing loop or put in the IOL in the back and remove viscoelastic. Once you've done that, you enclavate these clips onto the capsular axis margin. Now, two remaining clips are also enclavated anteriorly over the capsular axis margin. This can be done by making two side ports exactly opposite to each other. Now four clips have encapsulated the capsular axis margin and two haptics are in the capsular bag. This 3D animation will explain the whole thing very clearly to us. 
the two notched clips are anteriorly to the capsular axis along with the two winglets and two haptics are within the capsular band. I will show a modified method of insertion of this IOL. Here we make sure that the leading loops or the leading haptics are inside the bag along with the notched clip. Also pushing the trailing haptic along with the notched clip into the capsular bag. Now all the clips and the haptics are within the capsular bag. We ensure a very meticulous visco removal. Now you will notice that I am doing a very visco removal very meticulously. I am just fast forwarding it for the paucity of time. Once complete viscoelastic has been removed from behind the IOL also, then we proceed to either put viscoelastic on top of the IL to enclavate or lock in the clips or do it under hydro procedure. Now you will notice I have enclavated one of the notched clips. Now proceeding towards the second one, I am doing this under the pressure of the BSS. The third small little clip will be pulled and again brought anterior to the capsular axis. Now for the change of hands, you slowly withdraw the irrigating cannula. Ensure that there is no sudden shallowing of the anterior chamber. Otherwise, there is a chance that the clips may de-enclavate. Some of you may be wanting to use viscoelastic to do this particular procedure of enclavation of the various clips. Now the fourth and the last clip is pulled up and locked up anterior to the capsular excess margin. Now we notice that all the four clips are anterior to the capsular margin with the capsular axis ring totally circling the IOL tightly and two large haptics are within the capsular bag. We hydrate the wound well. Now we will proceed to put small amount of myotic to ensure that as the pupil closes down on the IOL, it does not get stuck into the enclavated clips. Now I will still some pilocarpine to make the pupil small and we see a beautifully centered lens here. Thank you.